Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to share with you the best bleed builds that I use to consistently break the game while having a relaxed and fun experience. The thing with bleed is that it is directly related with the target's HP, which can make this status effect more powerful in higher new game cycles and against enemies that have a lot of HP. Which leads me to remind you that all the background gameplay of this video was recorded on New Game Plus 7, so you can expect a great performance of each build no matter the new game cycle in where you are. However, the bleed procs will be more impressive in terms of raw damage when playing in the max scaling of the game since enemies will have a lot of more HP in that scenario. In the 7th place we have the Grim Reaper, a very cool looking build that can drain the HP bar of all enemies as fast as a finger snap. Usually the most effective bleed builds are based on arcane and dexterity, but this build will reach its max performance with strength and faith. The Gravesight has innate bleed build up, which makes it perfect to combine with Blood Flame Blade. The power of this incantation will scale only with faith and despite of being a buff spell, its power will be affected by your seal scale values and upgrade level. With this setup we can effectively build up bleed and deal a lot of base and fire damage at the same time, allowing us to be completely broken in almost every fight. We are going to be using the Gravesight on plus 10 with the spinning weapon Ash of War on the heavy affinity. We need the Ghost Slayer seal on plus 25 to get the most out of the Blood Flame Blade and to cast our main buffs. I am using the Royal Remains helmet and gauntlets with the Knight's Cavalry armor and grips to have a good style and to not get interrupted while attacking. The most effective talismans for this monster are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation and the Rodden Windsor in Insignia. If you struggle to keep your HP bar full, the Millicent's Prosthesis is a good option as well. In the Physic Flask, the Thorny Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear will do the job extremely fine. A very optional step that you can perform with all builds that I will not repeat in order to save some time for all of us is that you can equip any weapon with Seppuku and use it before each fight to start the combat with the Lord of Blood Stylisman and White Mask Damage buffs. But as I said, it is completely optional since you will get these benefits as soon as you apply Bleed on your target. The most optimal stats for the Green Reaper are Forion, Vigor and Endurance. 80 on strength and 60 on faith. Golden Bow, Hall of Shabriri and Blue Flame Blade are the best incantations for this build. Before going to the next spot, we have a quick message from today's video sponsor. MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for an amazing price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. In the next spot, we have the Lord of Blood, one of my favorite builds of the game. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and you may need a little bit of practice to get a good timing with this one, but once you learn that, you will unlock which can potentially be the best boss weapon of Elden Ring. This build is amazing to deal with crowds. The unique skill Bloodborne Ritual, better known as Nihil, deals fire damage, has a huge range and a ridiculous bleed build up. It scales only with the weapon upgrade level and with arcane, so we are going to prioritize this stat over the others. This build will be really useful to get rid of the annoying groups of enemies that are everywhere around the game. But as you can see in the background gameplay, it is a monster in boss fights and as it is a great spear, the stance damage it deals is extraordinary. The Mogwin Sacred Spear must be upgraded to plus 10 and we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. I'm going to use the Lord of Blood's robe on its altered version, but for new game plus 7 this is not optimal, so be sure to use any other armor set you like. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Fire Scorpion Charm and the Lord of Blood's Exultation. In our flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to use the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear and the Strength Knot Crystal Tear. This weapon is very effective but it needs a lot of stamina, therefore be sure to have some of these bad boys to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the max performance of this build we need Vigor on 4 and Endurance on 35. We must level up Strength to 43, Faith to 33 and Arcane to 80. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri will be our main buffs. Moving forward to the top 5 we have the Sanguine Noble, a truly versatile setup and one of the most stylish bleed builds you can craft in this game. With this combo you can develop a very aggressive playstyle with low risk. It seems like the Reduvia and the Bloody Hellish are meant to be played together, since both weapons scale with the same stats in the same values and they complement each other surprisingly good. You can play as you feel comfortable but I like to use the Bloody Hellish to face the most complicated parts of a boss fight and then I switch to the Redubia to completely melt the boss HP bar at the first chance I have. But the best part of this build, at least in my opinion, is how fancy and fast the combat looks when using this build. For some reason this combo is criminally underrated despite of being one of the strongest builds you can craft in Elden Ring. We need the Bloody Helis and the Redubia both upgraded to plus 10 and any seal will be fine to cast or buffs. I will use the White Mask, the Sanguine Noble Rove and the Fire Prelate Gauntlets and Grips. This combo will give us a good poise and a robotic style. The most powerful talismans for this setup are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation and the Rodden Windsor Insignia. In the same way than with the Green Reaper, if you find difficult to keep your HP bar full, the Millicent's Prosthesis is for you. In the Physic Flask, the Thorny Crack Tear and the Dexterity Note Crystal Tear will perform incredibly good. Our main weapons deal only physical damage, for that reason Blood Bowl Aromatic is the best body buff we can use, however Hall of Shabriri will perform just fine. The best stats for this build will be Forion Vigor and 35 on Endurance, Forion Dexterity, Faith on 33 and Arcane on 80, Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri 
three are going to be our main buffs. Now we have the Blood Kenshi, a samurai build based on spear gameplay. The Cross Naginata is a fantastic spear that has a unique R1 moveset, a huge range, and of course, it has innate bleed build up, which means that we can craft a build prioritizing the base damage and boosting the bleed procs with Blood Fling Blade. In this case, we can choose between two Assets of War for this weapon, Blood Tax and Repeating Thrust, being Blood Tax the safest option as it heals in relation with the damage you deal, and Repeating Thrust is the most powerful choice but it doesn't grant the healing feature. Feel free to choose the one that fits better with your playstyle. Both are amazing options for the Naginata, and as a good samurai we will have our katana to deal with groups of enemies faster. We are going to use the cross Naginata on plus 25 with the Repeating Thrust Ash of War on the Kin Affinity and the plus 25 Bleed Ochigatana with the Unsheet Ash of War. We will need the God Slayer Seal on plus 25 to get the best scaling from our incantations and to cast our main buffs. You can choose any armor set you like, but the traditional Land of Reed set is the best looking armor for this build. The greatest talismans for this warrior are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. Once again, a very strong alternative for any talisman is the Millicent's Prosthesis. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to be using the Flame Shouting Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. To shred bosses with this build, we need to level up Vigor and Endurance to 40, Dexterity to 80 and Faith to 60. Golden Bow, Hall of Shabriri and Blood Flame Blade will be our main buffs. We find ourselves in the top 3 where we will find the most broken bleed builds of the entire game. But first, I'd like to thank you all for being such an awesome community and for supporting my videos with your valuable feedback. If you enjoyed the builds, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't lose any new video. I strongly recommend you to do it because I will have a surprise for you before the DLC release. In third place, we have the Crimson Hunter, a classic dual curved sword build. And you might be wondering why I am using the Scavenger Swords instead of the Bandits or Beastman's curved swords. The reason is so simple. In the Occult Affinity, we will will preserve and boost the innate bleed build up of these weapons, we will have a great base damage scaling and with seppuku we will boost our bleed build up even more. I chose the scavengers curved swords cause they are the best for high gear new game cycles. It is true that the other weapons have better base damage, both for bleed procs, the scavengers are the best and you don't have to farm for hours to get them. Also we will have a lower load allowing us to wear a better armor set optimizing our build at max. If you are looking for the true elden ring easy mode, this build is for you. We are going to be using two scavengers curved swords on plus 25 with the Seppuku Ash of War on the Occult Affinity. And any seal will be good to cast our main buffs. I will use the Hoslo set with the Dialos Mask and the Blight's Grips. This way we will be rocking a fire look and we will have enough poise to become unstoppable. The most effective talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we will use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Green Spill Crystal Tear. With this build we are going to deal only physical damage. For that reason Blood Boil Aromatic will be the best body buff for this setup. But don't worry cause if you don't like crafting, you can use Hall of Shabriri perfectly fine. It is very weird to run out of stamina with this build, but if you can craft some Pickle Turtle Legs, feel free to do it. In order to get the max performance of this build, we will use 45 on Vigor and Endurance, we will level up Dexterity to 40, Fate to 33, and Arcane to 80. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main buffs. And how cool we talk about bleed builds and not include the destructive Spear Demon. My favorite build of all times. I really wanted this one to win, but yeah, it's not even close to be compared with the winner of this top in terms of damage. However, the amount of style and power we can get with this build is quite unique. It's hard to believe that a build with such fancy movesets can be one of the most broken bleed builds as well. The secret of this monster is behind its fast paced combat. It feels like you are playing Sekiro sometimes. The katana and twin blade gameplay will blow your mind because of how impressive it is to look at those HP bars getting melted while styling on bosses. And because of all those fast attacks constantly hitting the enemies, we can get multiple bleed procs in seconds. For this one we are going to use the Eleonora's Paul Blade and the Rivers of Blood, both upgraded to plus 10. And we need any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. I am going to use the running set with the Iron Casa, but you can use any other armor set you like. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. However, the Fire Scorpion Charm and the Lord of Blood's Exultation are very good alternatives if you are missing one of these talismans. In the Physic Flask, the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear will dramatically increase the performance of the build. Our main weapons consume a lot of stamina, so crafting some Pickle Torten Legs is not a bad idea for this one. The best stats for the Spear Demon are 40 on Vigor, 35 on Endurance, 60 on Dexterity, 33 on Faith and 70 on Arcane. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri are the perfect buffs for this build. And in first place, as the winner of this stuff, we have the Dual Hawk Blade. I don't know about you guys, but I think the best bleed build is the one that can perform amazingly good against enemies that doesn't bleed at all. The Gargoyle's Twin Blitz in the Bleed Affinity will scale incredibly good with the strength, and with a decent level of Arcane, they will have a tremendous bleed build up, allowing this combo to be extremely effective against all type of enemies. Now, imagine a bleed build that is completely broken against enemies that doesn't bleed, what you can expect for enemies that actually bleed. Another important feature of this setup is that of all the builds that we have seen until now, this one is the easiest one to use. It is even
even easier than the Crimson Hunter, so if you are looking for a chill experience dealing a lot of damage, this one is your build. We need 2 plus 25 Gargoyle Stone Blades with the Craft Blade Ash of War in the Blood Affinity, and the Inisil we have available to cast our main buffs. I will use the White Mask, the Raptor's Black Feathers to boost the power of the jump attacks, and the rest of the armor is up to you. The most effective talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Rodding Windsor Insignia, and the Claw Talisman. And against enemies that doesn't bleed, you can remove the White Mask and use the Millicent's Prosthesis instead of the Lord of Blood's Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Green Spill Crystal Tear or the Strength Knot Crystal Tear. Feel free to choose the one that works better for your playstyle. And as we are going to be dealing only physical damage with this build, Blood Boy Aromatic is the bomb. But you already know that you can use Hall of Shabriri perfectly fine. The most optimal stats for this baby are 40 on Vigor, 35 on Endurance, we are going to level up Strength to 70, Faith to 33, and Arcane to 60. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main boss. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of this builds. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I'll see you in the next one.